Recently, I made a video called Dark Duel Stories and Forbidden Memories of Yugi Kaiba Formats where I asked the question, were there three or five original Yu-Gi-Oh sets that were released in the TCG? So in that last video, I showed how Forbidden Memories is way more disputable than Dark Duel Stories because of Forbidden Memories absolutely having at least two releases, one with the promos and one without. But I also inferred that Dark Duel Stories probably had two releases as well and was up to contention just as much, but I didn't have the sources or evidence to confirm my suspicions, so I just kind of spoke about the possibility and nothing more. However, as it turns out, neither Dark Duel Stories nor Forbidden Memories are legal for the May 2002 format. Not at all, and they never were. After my last video, Cormac Newton took it upon himself to set the facts straight and pick up where I left off. I want to thank him for all of his hard work and his findings, as heartbreaking and disappointing as they are. This video will be going over his data and will be putting the issue to rest once and for all. Let's start with the bombshell. These cards were not legal in tournaments until late December 2002 after Pharaoh's Servant was released. The reason why is that Konami distributed the video game promos and until then, Upper Deck only allowed their own cards into tournaments. Because of Upper Deck originally operating Yu-Gi-Oh! in the TCG while Konami operated the OCG. The Upper Deck website on December 1st, 2002 shows Pharaoh's Servant not being legal yet with no news about promos. The Upper Deck website on February 10th, 2003 displays news from after December that that the following cards all became legal at the same time. Konami Game Promos, Dark Duel Stories, Forbidden Memories. McDonald's Pack Cards, released December 20th, 2002. The Jump 01 Blue Eyes, released November 2002. The DL1 Promos, Thousand Eyes and Buster Blader. By this time, Pharaoh's Servant had also been made legal. Note their use of the term Konami Game Promos, i.e. not distributed by Upper Deck and therefore previously not legal for play. A comment from a Neo Seeker thread on December 3rd tells us that the Upper Deck website had just recently included the new update about promo legality. We can therefore say that the Dark Duel Stories and Forbidden Memories game promos were legalized at some points between December 1st and December 30th, 2002. To narrow it down further, the McDonald's cards mentioned were released on the 20th, so it was therefore announced sometime between the 20th and the 30th of December of 2002 that the promos were to be made legal for play. Next up, let's talk about Metamorph and Forbidden Memories. Metamorph was released as part of the Forbidden Memories Premium Edition in November 2002, after the original Forbidden Memories in March of 2002, which did not include any promotional cards. This was shown in my last video that I was talking about earlier. Two separate Neo Seeker threads from November and December of 2002 show players remarking on the new FMR promo cards they've never seen before and describing the March FMR release as not having had any promos. This Game Zone article in particular puts to bed the rumors about North America receiving it in March and Europe in November, as the article refers to Canada Konami of America Incorporated announcing the new product in November and lists the price of the product as $34.99. Also putting this to rest is the information that I provided in the last video about Europe not even getting the Forbidden Memories promos. Now let's talk about Acid Trap Hole and Dark Duel Stories. Even though we have already established that the Dark Duel Stories promos were not tournament legal, we might as well answer the question of their release dates while we're on the topic. The second DDS set which included Sayaryu, Salamandra, and Acid Trap Hole was released after the Blue Eyes White Dragon Dark Magician and Exodia set, as the first was for those who pre-ordered the game. So already, we can't trust the March release dates on the wiki and in the Konami database for the second set, as they list the two sets with the same release date, and we know that they had separate dates. This was also addressed in the last video. The Pojo Card of the Day archives from 2002 review the second set promos, and not the first, during their DDS week at the start of June 2002, about three weeks before Metal Raiders was released. In the review of Sayar, on June 3rd, 2002, one reviewer describes this DDS week as our first look into the second set of DDS cards. So with that in mind, if we were going to imagine a reinvention of the format that included Acid Trap Hole, it would look something like this. Players got all of their LOB cards and opened their structure decks in March, patiently waited months until June, assembled multiple copies each of the second wave DDS promos, and after all of that, considered those three weeks in June to be the cross section of the format that should remain immortalized. It's a bit much to reinvent just to squeeze a single card into the format that hasn't been there for the past 18 years. So why does Konami list the release dates for these cards in their databases being in March then? You can imagine that whoever was in charge of writing the dates probably just didn't feel like diving 
diving into the archives just to be precisely correct about this minute point on their database. And also, from what I know personally, the process very well may have been automated to save time. In short, the sets show March release dates on the database just to keep it simple. Upper Deck did not allow the card, so neither set was legal in the time frame that we are looking at for May 2002 format. Even though DDS did have a second release that was early enough, the fact that the cards were not allowed to be played makes it irrelevant. The cards were not allowed and therefore not legal for tournament play. Playing with these cards only results in creating a custom format. You would not be playing one that actually ever happened, which sucks. I personally wanted these cards to be included because I think that they make the format about three times more fun, but I am also happy to end the debate and provide clarity for the Yu-Gi-Oh! community so that we can have another well-defined, nostalgic, cheap, and universal format for people to pick up, learn, and play. I want to thank Cormac once again for his dedication and hard work. I am now ending this video and this discussion. Legend of Blue Eyes. Starter Deck Yugi and Starter Deck Kaiba are the only sets in the May 2002 Yugi Kaiba format. Subscribe! <laughs> <laughs>